Hi, my name is Corey Johnson. I work on the social media team here at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a really exciting behind the scenes live video for you today. I'm joined by Kevin, one of our perfusionists, and Heidi, who's one of our nurses, and we're gonna talk about this life-saving device called an ECMO machine, and just talk about the role it has here at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. But before we get into it, I wanna introduce you to Kevin and Heidi. So can you tell us a little bit about your role here at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin? Sure, so I'm a perfusionist, and basically what I do is um, I'm a specialist who operates pumps and oxygenators that oxygenate and pump blood from outside the body while the heart is either um, resting or being operated on or the lungs need to rest. Okay. And I'm Heidi Wellner and I am the ECMO coordinator here at Children's in the Cardiac ICU and I also work with the nurses um, at the bedside in the ICU um, as our ECMO specialist and we have about 40 ECMO specialists and I help train them and make sure that people are competent in what they're doing and I also work with a liaison as a liaison between perfusion and nursing. And so can you, let's start off by describing well, where are we? We're in the cardiac intensive care unit, is that right? And what is that? The cardiac intensive care unit is a 24 bed ICU at Children's um, and we take care of any child um, or even into adulthood that has any kind of cardiac defect or diagnosis. And what is this machine that we're standing next to? So this is an ECMO pump. Um, ECMO is an acronym, it stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. And so basically there are two main parts. This is a pump. Um, it pumps blood um, and uh, we can use this pump for um, any size patient from a uh, newborn up until um, a full-grown adult. And what, what type of scenario would, would be involved with the patient that we would need to use this device or this machine? So anybody who um, needs assistance in pumping their blood. Okay. Um, so somebody who, um, in the adult world, you would see like uh, someone who's had a heart attack, a massive heart attack, mm -hmm. and their heart just isn't working very well, um, they would possibly need something like this to get their pump blood pumping. Uh, in the younger population, um, a lot of the severe defects that we see, the long um, uh, cardiac procedures that they undergo, mm -hmm. uh, their hearts just need a little bit of time to rest, and so we provide that, um, that support for them. And so for some of our patients, when this device is used on them, it, it could be a last resort or a very critical situation when we need to bring this machine out. That yeah, right? that's, very, that's very true. A lot of the times when we do use this um, is actually in a time when CPR is being used mm -hmm. on a patient in the ICU or somewhere else in the hospital. Um, and if the CPR isn't working, if we're not able to get the heart beating again, um, then we turn towards this machine to take over function of that. And so as I understand it, it, it's a bypass for either the heart or the lungs or both, or how does that Well, exactly? it's, it's either both the heart and lungs or just a, a essentially a bypass of the lungs. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the two main reasons for doing this would be cardiac failure or mm -hmm. um, some cardiac support, um, in which case we would bypass both the heart and the lungs. Another reason is respiratory failure, um, where we just need the lungs to rest and recover on low vent set settings. And in that case, um, we don't actually bypass either of them, we just assist the lungs in oxygenating the blood. So I wanna learn a little bit more about how it actually works, but before I do, could you paint the picture for me a little bit? You know, if we're here in the CICU and this device is brought in to help a patient who needs it, who are, who's the team that, that comes together to, to run this machine? Sure, so the, the main players in that would be a cardiac surgeon um, because we need access into the patient. So if you look at our dummy here that we use for educational purposes, um, these tubes that we actually put in the patient are called cannulae. Um, and these go in, um, one in the uh, carotid artery, another in the jugular vein. Um, and these are what we use to pull blood out of the patient and put blood back into the patient. And so, what is the, the mood in the room? What, is, what are people thinking about? How is the team focused on this? This is a pretty intense moment, right, when this team's coming together? Absolutely. Um, the, the mood is very much just solely focused on that patient mm -hmm. and giving the best care to that patient. 
Okay. Um, and so whatever that, that may be, essentially it, it boils down to getting the patient on the ECMO machine as quickly as possible in the safest manner. Okay. Um, and so everybody who's around the um, cardiac surgeon, the intensive care physicians, mm -hmm. um, there's a PA assisting the cardi uh, cardiac surgeon, um, there are OR technicians who are assisting the cardiac surgeon, uh, myself um, or the other perfusionist who is assembling and getting the pump primed and ready to go on to ECMO, mm -hmm. um, and then nurses assisting everybody with um, getting meds into the patient, um, continuing CPR if that's needed, yeah. um, assisting us with getting the pump ready, um, really anything that, that needs to be done to care for that patient. So from a very high level, um, can you just walk through again how this works? Sure. Um, so, so like I was saying earlier, there are two main parts to the ECMO pump. Uh, one is the actual pump, and this is um, basically just a disc that's contained in uh, this um, outer casing. Mm -hmm. And that disc spins at a very high rate, about, um, we generally see about 2,500 RPMs. And the friction of that disc um, spinning against the blood um, sends that blood out of the pump and then it comes into this box here which we call an oxygenator um, and into this oxygenator we send um, medical grade air and oxygen um, and it passes by a diffusion membrane is what we call it and the air the oxygen diffuses across that membrane into the oxygenator just like our lungs would and CO2 comes out of the blood into the air um, again just like our lungs would work so th so this is the lungs portion of the ECMO and that's the heart portion. so what we're seeing in there is not blood today that's like cold no, water or something, right, right right yeah okay. no this is uh, this is a simulation okay um, for education purposes and as I understand it, earlier today, uh, our team went through some training with the ECMO. Is that an ongoing thing we need to do? or? Yes, we have ongoing education for all of our ECMO specialists here in the ICU. And um, we have mandatory training that they go through twice a year at least, at a minimum. Um, and I usually gather about five or six ECMO specialists at a time, and we get together and we troubleshoot um, different scenarios that may or may not happen while a patient is on ECMO. Um, and then we also do do training with a multidisciplinary team throughout the year. And that goes, that can be with surgeons, perfusionists, or the OR team. Um, and we get together and we do cannulation simulations to make it more real life so we can practice what we're doing so we can deliver the best care for the patient. Okay. Now, I understand that there may be different reasons that a child may need to be on ECMO. And does that mean that the child may be on this device for varying levels of time? Yeah, absolutely. It could be anywhere from a couple of days um, up to more than a month um, in some cases. And does the age of the child um, matter in, in how this machine is used? or? No, it doesn't. We, we use okay. this on uh, newborns who are just a couple hours old yeah. um, to adults. And is something like this available during like a transport situation where we're mobile? Yes, yeah. we do have a, a specific transport cart that we use for mobile ECMO. Um, and we can, you know, transfer some of this equipment onto our stretcher that we use and we can go by ground to pick up anybody okay. from an area hospital. Now, I, I should ask this while earlier. they are on ECMO. Really? So, is the patient awake or under medication, or what's going on with the patient while all this is happening? The patient is, is under medication, and yeah. they're asleep and, and sedated and paralyzed. This. this is extremely interesting. Um, is there anything else that you think that our Facebook fans would like to know about the ECMO machine or your, or your team? I think so. I think we covered pretty yeah, much everything. I think, I think that covers it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I really appreciate every time you tune into our live Facebook broadcast. Thank you so much.